of Wei Chen Lin at Busan National University. He will give a talk about uh, travel with geodesics in black to white for housing uh, scenarios. Please. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer and uh, APCTP for their hospi uh, hospitality and uh, their uh, effort they put in this conference. And it's an honor and a pleasure to be able to attend a conference uh, in person again. So today I'm going to talk about the work I collaborate with uh, Do uh, Professor Do Ki Hong and Professor Dong Han Yan. Uh, uh, about this title, Trouble with the Geodesic in Back to White Hole Bouncing Scenario. So we hope that we can uh, put this one on archive soon. Okay. Next page. Yes. Okay. So first, the outline of today's uh, my talk. Uh, first, I will give you a very brief uh, uh, introduction about the background and the model we considered. And then I will we talk about the the, how we use the thin shield general approximation to generalize the model. And then I will introduce the uh, uh, geodesic analysis and use this method. We find the corresponding energy shift and squeezing of the radial geodesic. And then talk about the problem uh, because of uh, those effects. And then in the end, I talk a little bit about the possible rescue. Okay. So one of, one of the biggest questions in theoretical physics is the singularity inside a black hole. And so there are many different uh, quantum gravity theory uh, trying to solve this problem. And one of the strong candidate is the loop of quantum gravity. So in this uh, uh, theory, the singularity usually is removed and replaced by a black hole phase followed by a black hole phase. So this is why we say uh, back to pi hole uh, bouncing scenario. So this picture belongs to the, the category of uh, regular uh, black holes. So in this case, a singularity free solution can be interpreted as uh, a classical extension of space time. But even from uh, loop quantum gravity, uh, they are different approaches. So they create different uh, black to pi hole bouncing scenario. Uh, models. Uh, so, so uh, in this work, what we consider actually is this B BNN model. So this is constructed by Bendendorfer and Mele and Munch uh, by them. So the overall picture is very similar to this one that created uh, constructed by Ashtaka and his collaborator. So. The bouncing surface is inside the event horizon. So black hole uh, followed by a white hole. And so this is basically a, 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 a cyclic model. So to the future, there are infinite many cycle and they also are infinite many cycle in the past. So what's the difference is, is that in Ashtaka's uh, model, all of the, ma the mass of the black holes and white holes are all the same. But in uh, this BNN model, there is a mass uh, amplification or the amplification relation. And the by, uh, can be formulated in this short uh, equation. And by choosing beta, uh, uh, the, the beta value of this parameter is either uh, five over three or three over five. Uh, based on their calculation, this is the uh, the way to have the quantum gravity effect trigger at a, a, a certain uh, uh, curvature scale. So, and this construction is actually very complicated. So, and how do we generalize this and to study the classical picture? The way is to, one way is the most common way is to use the thin shear approximation. So basically we assume uh, we do a cut and paste We do a cut and paste uh, procedure, and and so and there is a thing. So we cut and paste a, a, a black hole solution with the and connected with the white hole solution here. And here is the thin shield, and the thin shield has to satisfy the e-serial junction conditions. So there are two uh, of them. 
The first one is the induced mesh must be the same uh, on both sides. And the, the, the second one is the shield and the metric around it has to satisfy Einstein equation. Basically, you can, the, the, the idea of those two uh, uh, junction conditions is from, the, uh, are from here, those two ideas. So basically what we do is to, uh, this is the usual uh, structural solution. And here we swap the, 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 the position of R and T because we want to emphasize inside of the event horizon. The R is the temporal direction and T is the spatial direction. And F is the one minus two M uh, over R. And also here uh, I, I choose a plus is for the white hole and minus is for the black hole. Sorry, I, 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 did, I didn't put a symbol on this picture. But this is because we with the I, I choose the future direction as the direction of the service. Okay, so and so the the this type of case cut and paste is actually was studied by John Han and his collaborator Rama and the, in this work. So the overall methods is the same, and indeed even in this uh, cut and paste with the uh, mass differences, we still can find the stable solution here. Means that indeed, if we assume like a, we, 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 we tune the parameter, oh, sorry. Okay. If we tune the parameters for the thin shell, uh, the fine tune, even through fine tuning, a static and stable solution exists. So this means that the white hole and black hole are connected uh, at a, a, a minimal radius. Okay, so this is uh, the, 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 the type of situation we consider. So, so okay, so, so what's then? So if this cut and paste works, so how we can say more about this. So we notice that a pretty similar situation uh, happens in cosmological scenario. This famous paper, inflationary space time, are uh, incomplete in past direction by uh, by Border and Guth and Galinkan. So they are in this work. They are able to show that the uh, inflationary uh, space time is past incomplete and circumvent so all of the discussion about the energy condition. So basically, it is that the inflationary uh, scenario is past incomplete because any test particle, massive or massless, can be infinitely blue shifted within the, okay, so for mass, massive particle is, is uh, within its finite proper time. Okay, so this, this uh, theory, so can be also applied to cosmological cycling model with uh, average Hubble expansion rate greater than zero. So this is a model uh, recently uh, promoted by Ijash or and Stanhart. Okay. So then, because this uh, idea, we we want to see that uh, if we are able to uh, uh, gain some new information or the result based on this uh, geodesic analysis. So, okay, so we, if we want to, based on the first junction condition, uh, based on the first junction condition, we have to connect the, the, the two, two black hole and white hole smoothly. So it's actually implied that the geodesic also have to cross the, the thin shell uh, smoothly. So this uh, is what we call the no cusp condition. Uh, so, and also, so because this is charge shell solution, so we know the radial geodesic, the full velocity of the radial geodesic. We know the, the exact form of them. So it can be, re it's just simply written in this way. And the E is the energy density of the tense particle. And R is the full bounded uh, geodesic. The R is the maximum radius reached by those particles. So we want to connect the geodesic solution smoothly. So, but notice that we, we are using a different coordinate system. So we have to find a, a coordinate independent way to formulate this condition. 
So this is why we use the, the this gamma, the inner product of the two full velocities. So one of the full uh, velocity we choose is the this uh, special trajectory. Uh, it's actually belong to a radial geodesic. So this is actually those those uh, geodesic always stay inside the interior of the black hole and white hole. They ne they never go outside of the event horizon, even through the, the white hole process. So we choose, uh, so we formulate the no cusp condition in this way. And then by simple calculation, we can get this uh, uh, conclusion. This is what we call the energy shift result. So in order to connect the, the geodesic smoothly, so the energy changed for the test particle for the geodesic. So what, what does this mean? And remember, for bounded state, those E is related to the uh, maximum radius reached by the geodesic. And we here we just simple, simplify this F vector because usually, uh, because in a usual discussion, the B is very small. So compared to the, so compared to the two, uh, so, so we can simply uh, simplify to this form. So easier algebraically. So from this algebraic equation, uh, you, uh, is, uh, probably you need to do some bigger of envelope calculation and you can uh, 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 have this conclusion that in this sense, the bounded time-like geodesic uh, become closer to the event horizon in a mass decreasing direction. So the count closer means that the maximum radius uh, uh, makes maximum radius uh, reduce uh, each uh, uh, after each cycle. And then what? So so what then? Uh, because uh, remember the 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 model we consider is actually this kind of cyclic model. There are infinite many of this cycle in this type of model. So if we consider that the the mass is always decreasing in one direction. This actually we can show that by a given um, a finite number of cycle, all of, all of the bounded uh, geodesic in one state, they will be all squeezed inside the range of the stretch horizon. This means that when they go out of the of the, of the black hole and uh, go out of the white hole, they cannot like uh, away from the event horizon more than one Planck length. So, the, and we can also show that this always happens uh, very early before the, the so the, the system, the black hole and white hole, the mass is still very massive. This means that uh, around the, uh, re, the region of the event horizon, everything should be classical. So for example, we can use the solar mass at one stage and until that all of the boundaries stay are squeezed inside a stretch horizon, the system still has the, this, this, uh, this uh, mass. So it's still pretty heavy. So this is a very weird phenomenon. So, and I found this quote in uh, this paper, uh, uh, can experiment involve black hole, then there is a quote from Preskill, apparent contradiction can always be uh, traced to unsubstantiated assumptions about physics at or beyond the Planck scale. Uh, so there must be something where should happen. So the one uh, we think of is still like a follow this gamma vector. So on the the hem side is the usual in and out situation. So this is what we think is a usual uh, geodesic. So this time we choose one of the full velocity is the full velocity of the, the pink line here is the, the in and out geodesic, full, full velocity of the in and out geodesic. And the other one is just a, rent, a usual in falling uh, for, uh, full velocity. So if we do this calculation to calculate this gamma vector, the green arrow here means that the calculation, the number is, 
is some like a finite number fairly fall into some reasonable range. And this one is problematic uh, because this is right at the event horizon of the white hole. So this that calculation actually is uh, explored at this place, but it is okay because how do we find a physical reasonable trajectory able to move in this way? And for in, for 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 into the for in for into a black hole or move away to the future identity. So this this type is uh, okay, but in this um, so so the, the the problematic here is that is that the 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 the, the trajectory to uh, to to have this uh, full velocity they are also itself is bad, but the, the situation here is that. Whenever the the infalling object meet the this type of a geodesic, all of the this calculation, the gamma factor is always very close. So uh, gamma factor is very large. This means that the relative velocity between the 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 geodesic and this infalling object approach to speed of line. And here, because this is the this is the Planck scale difference between the black hole system and the Planck lens, so is the Planck mass. Uh, so the difference the, is the of order of the black hole and the Planck mass difference. So, 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 this is the, so this means that the interaction must be very strong, indicate the instability of this, this kind of space-time structure. So uh, lastly, so possible rescue and discussion. So uh, in BNM model, the, they actually uh, propose the, the, those two value uh, exchange every time uh, perfectly uh, symmetrically. So this is able to one, once uh, increase and relax second time. But uh, we think that they don't, they, they, they are able to construct the picture, the classical picture in this way, but there's no really any dynamical reason why, why one should follow the other. The second type of picture can avoid this type of problem is the also uh, from uh, Donghan's paper, uh, one of Donghan's paper uh, collaborated with uh, Brahma and Chen, is the, uh, instead of have an influence cycling model, we have a time moving point to the different direct, opposite direction. So there is no cycling picture, but uh, but just uh, come, actually we are pacing the two black holes together. Okay, and summary. So uh, in, a, in, in a black hole to white hole uh, bouncing scenario with the mass difference, we find that uh, uh, the radio geodesic lose energy and become closer to the event horizon in the mass decreasing direction. And then by tracing a finite amount of bouncing cycle, all of the bounded geodesic can be squeezed within the range of the, the stretch horizon and while the, the, the system is still very massive. So, and we point out that this type of geodesic are problematic since the unusual infalling info object uh, has a relative velocity of approach to speed of light for them. So this re result should indicate, should indicate the inst instability of this type of bouncing model. Uh, thank you. Okay. Mm, so the, the, the bouncing actually is just uh, inside of the, uh, based on the loop quantum gravity construction, the black hole, uh, the singularity is uh, the, the I equal to zero singularity point is removed and replaced by a, a transition surface and connected to a white hole phase. So and so there is no uh, equal to zero singularity at all because uh, 
uh, and the idea is that uh, uh, the loop quantum gravity correction modifies the Lagrangian and Hamiltonian, and those can treat it as a semi-classically. Semi so we still have a effective uh, classical space-time model, but uh, just uh, remove the, the I, equal to zero, I equal to zero singularity point. Yeah. So, and this transition, so basically is this type of transition from black hole to white hole is called a uh, black hole to white hole bouncing scenario. Yeah. Yeah. So, though. And thanks, Colgate. Thank you. Thank you.